So let's talk a little bit more about U.S. SHIP, once again, the U.S. Swine Health Improvement Plan. What is that? What's all involved with it? So it really is a voluntary program. Uh, it was a pilot program funded by the USDA and the National Pork Board. And it was really modeled after the National Poultry Improvement Plan. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the NPIP plan, it's a cooperative industry, state, and federal partnership, and it was really designed to sustain export markets and ongoing interstate commerce in unaffected states or regions. Once again, with the goal of demonstration of freedom of disease outside of trade impacting control areas. So that program was established in 1935, so it's been running well over 80 years. Participation is voluntary, but it is really pretty universal inside of the poultry industry. It's implemented across all the different segments and the egg industry, and it is really the universally recognized standard of poultry health. So the plan or the format was pretty much there. It was just really, can we adopt something similar and tailor it specifically to the swine industry? An example of the potential power of a plan like this was really looking at the two most recent outbreaks of high path avian influenza. So for example, when we had the first one in 2015, there were 60 countries that banned US um, poultry, um, but with the advancements in biosecurity as part of their plan, uh, since 2015, but the outbreak in 2022, only two countries banned, uh, banned the, the import of poultry from the US during the most recent high path avian influenza. So you would hope that with the maturation of the US SHIP program, that would be what we would might have uh, in the event that we would have a foreign animal disease outbreak as well. And really the, the key piece of that is this ASF CSF monitored certification, okay? So what this does is US SHIP kind of serves as an umbrella, so the different programs that we talked about, AgView, CSSC, Secure Pork Supply, uh, they all kind of roll up as becoming integral pieces of um, U.S. SHIP certification. And that U.S. SHIP certification kind of starts to become establishing a national playbook of technical standards to provide a uniform approach to disease prevention, response, and recovery. Uh, by each of those participating members and states. Once again, centering on preventing the disease and demonstrating freedom of disease outside of uh, the trade, uh, sorry, of the control areas. So if you can see a little bit of how that program really works is um, there's a process where we have technical standards that are associated with that program. So if you kind of start at the uh, the 11 o'clock position, the producers and packers, they implement this program according to those standards. And then in between uh, the years where the House of, uh, the Del House of Delegates meet, they'll look at and evaluate potential new standards. Okay, so there'll be a Congress of industry stakeholders and subject matter experts, and there'll be representation of producers, packers, veterinary medical uh, officers, veterinarians, diagnosticians, and their, their goal really is to define and continually update the program. So they'll have a House of Delegates meeting. There's been two for the SHIP program so far uh, in Des Moines, and then in one most recently in Minneapolis in September of 2022, where they'll vote on these standards. Uh, and then whatever standards pass, uh, that will help to get facilitated. USDA, um, they'll facilitate the program and maintain the program documents. And all those uh, standards then, they all get administered at the state levels. So the official state agencies in each state, that's where um, those documents get held. That's where the enforcement actually takes place. And then once again, it's back up to the producers and packers to implement those standards. So then each year, right now, currently with US SHIP, each year, there'll be a House of Delegates meeting where new standards will be brought forth and proposed. So you can see how that's how that program gets updated. There's been a total of 32 states so far that have expressed an interest in participating in the U.S. SHIP pilot program that represents about 99% of the U.S. domestic swine. 
what are the year one requirements so far? And this is year one is where sites are being uh, enrolled so far, once again, to this voluntary program. You have to have a premise identification information. You have to have a current and active veterinary client patient relationship. Uh, you have to, your the site can't uh, do any garbage or swill feeding. Uh, the site has to commit to international visitors observing five days downtime once they arrive in the U.S. mainland. They have to complete a biosecurity survey at enrollment. They have to keep live animal movement records and then practice sharing them with the official state agency. And then there are no sampling and testing requirements in year one. So why should uh, why should somebody participate? Why should a producer participate? Why would you want to? This is really kind of the next step in FAD preparation. As we talked about before, we looked at those different programs. It, it really is going to prepare you uh, if we get into a situation where we have an incursion of a foreign animal disease in the United States. It's a successful uh, pilot program and really going to build foundations for an uh, official program. Um, the pilot program started as a two-year program. It's going to be extended to a five-year program with the uh, pl eventual plan is USDA will then codify it into a national program, just like the National Poultry Improvement Program. Some of the advantages, though, if we do run into a situation where we have a uh, foreign animal disease outbreak, it should streamline interstate streamline interstate movements between certified sites because the state animal health officials will know and understand what all goes into ship U.S. ship certification for those sites. They understand the traceability, the biosecurity, uh, and the surveillance portions of that. That should help develop and reassure some confidence in uh, those pigs coming from that site. It will help establish international recognition for trade, hopefully eventually expand the program to certify endemic diseases as well. So how do you participate in SHIP? Uh, there's kind of an enrollment process. You have to contact the official state agency. We'll go through that for the state of Iowa here in a second. You'll enroll your live uh, swine production sites or slaughter, slaughter facilities within this, that uh, official state agency. Uh, acknowledge understanding of and compliance with requirements for certification, and then you complete the biosecurity survey as well. Is there any cost to be in the program? That's a question that we get. The only costs really are those associated with meeting or exceeding the current standards. So at this time, those are VCPR with the a herd veterinarian, which most producers already have. There's routine biosecurity and traceability standards. No testing standards today for ASF or CSF currently. How are packers participating in U.S. SHIP? Now they can enroll their participating plants within the state's OSA. And I think that as of this recording, there were 14 plants that were enrolled in the program. And the North American Meat Institute president and CEO has indicated that their membership is fully supportive of U.S. SHIP as a national program. They wanna know just one set of rules for all plants across the U.S. That's really their goal. And U.S. SHIP provides uh, a template and a venue for that to happen. So you can enroll a single site or multiple sites to do that. There's a copy of a couple of those different forms here. If you're in the state of Iowa, you can go to iowaagriculture.gov slash ship, and that will bring you to the page there that you see on the right. And then you just click on the box that says enroll now, and it will go ahead and walk you through the process of getting your sites enrolled. We talked a little bit about the biosecurity survey and really the point of that is to provide some additional information to the biosecurity working groups. As you can imagine, a lot of the standards uh, initially are looking at different biosecurity aspects and how do we improve that. So information gathered during the survey will help those groups inform those groups on what the standard should look like. Uh, they're electronically captured. There are only 10 questions. They cover areas such as secure pork supply plans, perimeter fencing and outdoor access, mortality disposal methods, farm entry procedures, imported feed ingredients and holding times, and transportation standards, sanitation procedures for your site or sites. So here's some information as of August 10th. There were uh, up to just shy of and now well over 7,000 sites that have been enrolled in 26 states. 
you can see the breakdown uh, there by state, of the different states, the number of sites by each of the states that have been signed up with US SHIP. And here's an example of one of those biosecurity questions. This was the question, by these different site types, do you have a completed uh, secure pork supply plan? So this information was actually used to help develop a standard that was most recently passed in the second House of Delegate meeting in September of 2022, which said uh, for the site types of boar stud breeding herd, farrow to finish and growing sites, growing pig sites, you have to have a completed biosecurity plan, secure pork supply plan. And as you can see here, the majority, significant majority of the producers already had completed biosecurity plans. So let's compare what on-farm preparedness would look like for a couple of producers in a control area, one that was prepared and one that was not prepared. So here you've got one, let's look at the prepared producer that was in a control area. Because remember, if you're in the control area, but you're not infected, you are quarantined. In other words, to make, to have any pig movements, you're gonna have to get a movement permit to do that. So this producer, they're certified in SHIP already, right? So they have a lot of these things in place. They have traceability, so they have the verified pin, they're already tracking their animal movements. They have a biosecurity plan. So they have a written plan that were implemented prior to uh, the outbreak and then implemented the remaining few pieces afterwards. They have uh, certified swine samplers that are trained on the farm to collect the samples quickly so they can get them tested, so they can get their movement permit, and then they have an AgView account that's created and updated regularly. Let's contrast that to an unprepared producer. So they're not certified in SHIP, so they may be done a little bit, but they don't have all these things in place. They have a verified pin, but they're not tracking any animal movements. Well, if they're going to get a movement permit, they have to, that's one of the things, there's a testing requirement, but there's also uh, a records and movement re requirement as well. So now they got to go back, try to backtrack, get all that information. Then they have to get it to the state animal health official who has to enter it, in, you know, in, into a computer software program. Whereas the first producer had all that done. So it was just a matter of allowing access uh, to the state animal health official to get that done. From a biosecurity standpoint, they maybe have a written plan, but they didn't really finish it and haven't implemented anything. Surveillance, they were counting on the herd vet. Who knows if the herd vet's even available? Maybe they have other clients who don't want them to be inside of any control areas. So they don't have anybody trained on the farm to collect samples and nobody's getting a movement permit without samples that are tested negative. So, so that's just gonna create a longer delay to be able to make get that movement permit. And they have an egg view. They meant to create an account, but they haven't taken the time to do that yet either. So you can see it's gonna take the, producer number two a lot longer to get that movement permit, permit than producer number one. So kind of a call to action. What, what, what can we, what can producers be doing to really be prepared? So simplest, easiest, first thing they can do is just enroll and become certified in US SHIP. That really takes care of a lot of those other activities. And we just went through an example of why, and how that could really be important. So contact your official state agency within your state uh, if you're not sure who your OSA contact is, you can go to US Swine Health Improvement Plan.com or you can Google US Swine Health Improvement Plan and then go under Enroll and Certify. And then that will bring you up to a list of all the states and then who the OS, the official state agency or OSA is and their contact information. Enhance your traceability. Do that by creating an AgView account. Certainly, like you say, that's a, a great tool for pork producers out there to use. You know, for the state of Iowa to track your movements, it isn't mandatory to have an AgView account, but it certainly is a nice tool to be able to have. You can track your mo movements electronically in an Excel spreadsheet. That's just fine uh, as well. But uh, if uh, AgView certainly is a, a free software that's already available for you to do that. You can verify the PIN. That's always a, also a nice activity. Make sure it reflects the actual location of the farm. Sometimes when people apply for pins, they maybe don't have the site address done yet. So they put the address in there as the office in town or, or the home, the residence, and maybe that's not where the site's at. So another good FAD preparation activity is to go ahead and verify that that pin actually reflects the actual location of the animals. 
Make sure you track an animal movements onto and off the farm. That's going to be really vital, uh, particularly in an outbreak situation. If you have a site that's involved in the investigation, they're going to want to see all the animal movements into and out of that site or sites within the last 30 days. Implement biosecurity. Once again, a lot of great uh, resources available at securepork.org. Complete that biosecurity, site-specific biosecurity plan using the SPS templates. Uh, and then make sure you go ahead and implement that plan. Learn more about on-farm surveillance. So learn about the clinical signs associated with African swine fever as shown on securepork.org. And then uh, also be thinking about the next step is to say, well, what if I need to get samples collected? So ask your herd veterinarian about getting trained to collect samples through the, com, uh, through the Certified Swine Sample Collector Program or CSSC program. Once again, more information on that at securepork.org as well.